Hi, my loves. Jeremy Malay, the girl from around the way, where we have culture, conversation, and community. And I am coming to you all breaking news. If your girl is going courtside, she is because somebody in the NBA. However, that Drake intro went. Y'all, I don't think I need to kind of get into the things because here we have this white woman who is in support of a black man who is obviously an abuser of another black woman. Are we surprised? Gasp and clutches by imaginary pearls. I am not even disappointed because Iggy Azalea is a disappointment, okay? Um, I, I, I cannot be even more disappointed in her. I am just surprised at the blatant lie in the statement that she put out in this very like huffy kind of way. She's like, I haven't been in contact with Tori. I don't even, I haven't talked to him since prison and I don't support either way. Yada, yada, yada. Here you are. Letter gets leaked and you are gagged yet again. Um, first, before we get into the commentary, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because it helps me what achieve the things of the things. I'd appreciate the support. Simple as that. Now that you've already liked and you subscribed, let's hop into this commentary. So um, it was just released, the letter that she wrote to the judge, two, three, four page letter. And let me just say this. I think she actually wrote this letter. I think she took the time to write in that bad font, um, typed it up and wrote this letter to the judge. Now, Iggy Azalea has, you know, she's, she's, you know, making typos and she's saying and hi judge my name is Iggy Azalea like girl throw the letter away right then okay people on Twitter was talking about like <laughs> judge reads the letter I'm Iggy Azalea judge throws the letter away like literally she goes on to say that I have been a recording artist who's broken the uh, Beatles records I've done songs with um, Pitbull and Beyonce and immediately I'm like Beyonce Beyonce you look like Luther Vandross okay why would you try to include Beyonce in on this mess for real you are really dumb for real so as she's trying to <laughs> paint her character okay and um you know pretty much show the judge her um what is it called not character it is character but also validity validity is not the word but y'all know what i'm talking about establishing you know who she is she goes on to you know talk about um daystar peterson and she says that she's daystar is no pest like what we see in the media he's a gardener like yeah you would know coming from down under bitch y'all don't even have well anyway let me keep it cute the letter I'm not going to read. Y'all can see it online. You know, it is what it is. It's out there for all to see. But I want to talk about some key points. She says that she's been in contact with him um, since he's been in prison. And he says this is the best thing that's happened to him. You know what? Great. So since it's the best thing, let's continue. Let's not remove it from your higher self, Daystar Peterson. And let me just say this. This whole Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lane situation has been very polarizing within the black community. I mean, within all communities, whether it's men, women, other marginalized people. But here's the thing. I'm not going to say I am proud that we have another black man in this failing prison systems because you can be two things can be true at once. Right. Prison systems are trash. We need prison reform for real. OK, there are definitely rehabilitation um, systems that need to be in place and looked at. And the whole prison systems are just archaic, barbaric, like just antiquated. That's that's true. But who am I to say whether or not he should have had 10 years, 10 minutes, 10 moments? What I think the public outcry is, is going off of the fact that there are so many other people who are in these systems who obviously shouldn't be there. And why are we, you know, um, excited for another black man to not be able to take care of his family? That is not what I'm excited for. What I'm excited for is that a woman who was abused is seeing justice. Now, what that looks like, what that feels like is something completely different. Again, these systems are not designed to keep us um, in positions of power, um, you know, feeling good about these things. But listen. As far as I'm concerned, celebrities operate in a different level, okay? They don't have, ac they have access like me and you don't. They have resources like me and you don't. He decided because of his lack of self-regulation, his poor coping skills, whatever, whatever thing he had going on is what caused him to get in the situation. We're not dealing with the 80s LAPD where it was like he, they planted some crack on him. You get what I'm saying? 
whether you feel like he shot it, whether she feels like it was enough, we know that his involvement, and then also to the involvement, but then the actions after the fact, he terrorized Megan. He completely and utterly terrorized Megan Thee Stallion, y'all. Be for real. But anyway, I digress. Let's get into it. She says that she's been in contact with him every night or <laughs> nightly during his nightly prayer circles. It's the best thing that ever happened to him. And, you know, he's already had some time in jail. You know, I don't wish jail on nobody, girl. <laughs> what? I mean, not unless people who absolutely deserve it. I'm talking about, you know, the average day, you know, average working person. But she also goes on to say that she's hired his staff, you know, to kind of help with them and you know he takes care of a lot of people and things of that nature i mean he knew this he was acting all crazy and not great drinking and driving and making songs and and, and and quarantine radio and everything else he was doing he knew what he had to do i know that i gotta take care of my 15 other kids i can go outside and do something crazy end it all right now like these are all choices that we make in life so because he's beloved, because he has this um, elevated status as a celebrity and songwriter, talented young man, we're supposed to turn the blind cheek like he's not operating in these in this world in the same way as we are. Like, you know, come on. Anyways, y'all, I want to get back to the point at hand. She goes on and with the letter quick, quickly, quickly and clearly, she lied when she put out that Twitter statement saying that she hadn't been in contact with him. Um, she, you know, doesn't support because you're, you're, you're writing about his character. So that is support, Iggy. And uh, I mean, like as a black woman, I don't expect a white woman to come to my aid at any point in any juncture, but I th I find it interesting that she is also, um, a white woman who's a rapper. So is Megan who actually has skills. You know, we, we know that Iggy Azalea is not the best of entertainers, um, but her white privilege is what allowed her to, you know, have us all singing I'm So Fancy. And I don't care, even if you know I'm So Fancy ate down for a hot second, you cannot tell me that people are still out here standing for her because she never gave it up like that. Seriously, do we need some freestyle reminders about who Iggy Azalea actually is? Okay, so what she thought she was gonna do was use her, her white privilege and blanket Tory Lanez and then and our face says she's not going to support an abuser, which is what she put in the letter. I would not support an abuser because I've actually come from, you know, abuse in my own situations. And I know that you're a fair judge and I'm just so grateful and everything. Like, Iggy, stop. Stop. You thought that your white privilege was going to shield him and help him in lowering and reducing a sentence or even really so far as to really kind of get the whole situation thrown out. I really don't even think that we, none of us thought we would be here to see him being sentenced to 10 years. I'm sure of that. And it's so interesting because Iggy has gone on to say that, you know, Playboy Cardi was abusive to her and things of that nature. And, you know, expected all of us to rally up around her, but where we see um, a black woman speaking out, regardless if she recants it and change the stories, because here's the thing, there's something called like, you know, the cycles of abuse and how these things work. We as black people inherently don't like dealing with the police and it's, as black women, we naturally cape, and I'm putting that in air quotes because that's the buzzword. I'm done caping for these black men, but we naturally <clears throat> try to protect them. You know, and when it comes down to them protecting us, insert meanie meme here. Okay, we all know how it goes. Um, and Iggy aligned herself with a, a black man against a black woman. Are we surprised? Really, truly, are we surprised? I think, I think that because she has suffered from abuse, or at least that's what she told us, girl that she would keep a lower profile. I think what's interesting is that she talks about the relationship and the dynamics that he had with her. Oh, I met him one time in the studio. This is my Australian voice, y'all. <laughs> one down yonder. I don't even know. I can't, I can't. Cause who the fuck, Australian really? Is this Real Housewives of a Potomac? I don't even know what, what Ashley's husband sound like. Neither do I want to even sound like they is. Moving right along in my Australian accent. Um, she pretty much just says, I met him one time in the studio and I was struggling to write my raps. You know, maybe we can drive around Puerto Rico and find, drop some beats. 
And J. Star Peterson already had some things lined up for me. He already wanted to be my ghostwriter. And that is who he is. That's who he is. That's who I'm writing on behalf of. The man who's going to help resuscitate my career. Iggy, we see right through that, girl. And even if she thought that it was going to be privileged and nobody would be able to see it, like the letter was so cringe. And I understand it's cringy to apologize, even on behalf of someone else, even to try to show, like, it's, it's all, uh, I don't want to say ugly, because sometimes you need to apologize, but it's, it's embarrassing to apologize a bit. But then you're doing it for this man in this way. So the reason why you feel like he should get a reduced sentence is because he had some raps already written for your ass. <laughs> Girl, you, you can't make this shit up. The stories write themselves. I mean, apparently not her raps, but y'all get what I'm saying. Okay, then she goes on to say, this is just a, who, a reflection of who he is because he gave people opportunities because he's a he's a professional. He's good at what he does. That does not mean that he is not abusive in his personal relationships. I can go to work every day and be an outstanding, you know, upstanding citizen and, and, and employee and go home and um, terrorize. You get what I'm saying? One has nothing to do with the other. We all know that R. Kelly was a great songwriter and, and, a, and a great vocal performer. We all know that he has sexual proclivities for younger women, children. One does not have anything to do with the other. And again, two things can be true at once. And I think I find it interesting that this is what's the cultural incompetencies because Iggy, as a white woman in the industry, is going to get different treatment from black men than a black woman. We know these things, y'all. We know these things. So she's using her experience of him to undermine his actions. Well, he was always great in front of me, so of course, certain he couldn't do that to her. What the fuck? I'm just really interested to know what y'all think about this letter. And what is it given? It's given. <clears throat> I'm a white woman in the same musical industry as Megan. He, I never experienced him. He's a good black buck. <laughs> He's a good Negro. And he would never, never seen this nagger do anything like this before. Girl, YouTube is flagging the shit out of this video. <laughs> I'm done. Let me get out of here. Let me know what y'all think. Drop down in the comments. Let's get the conversation going. As always, I'm sending you much love and much light, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.